Hi Milika, I found a bra in my stash that I could use to do a short tutorial on how you can lower the neckline of your bra cap and maybe reduce the cap size a smidge. So the first most important thing is to make sure the band fits. I pinched it to make sure it fits. So the first thing I did was to mark the apex that is the nipple point and then I marked one and three eighths of an inch above that that's uh 3.5 centimeters above that mark to make sure that i have enough fabric to cover the areola then i draw a straight line there and i'm going to get some hairpins you could also use a peg but i noted that the hairpin is much better because it's thin i lifted my hand to make sure um, my neckline isn't gaping when I lift my hand when the bra is done. Then I pinched it using a peg. Um, make sure to get my assets out of the way so that I don't pinch myself. And that essentially creates the dart. I noted that uh, I need to make sure that the line down uh, the dart is perpendicular to your waistline so it should be moving up and down like that now I forgot to draw a straight line to mark that before I did the um, the left bra cap so that's what I'm going to do with the right bra cap make sure you fold the dart and the center point of your dart is that straight line that way when when you finish sewing the sewing line will be straight down perpendicular instead of turning out to be a diagonal like in the other cup so yeah uh, you could use a ruler tape or you could even draw that line when the bra is not on your body so that you can be able to see um, how the up and down goes instead of diagonal like I did accidentally I'm going to cover this up with a ribbon so I could make the ribbon a really wide one to make sure um, I hide the fact that it's diagonal. Okay, now I'm just remarking um, the point I measured that was one and three of an inch away from my apex point. I'm using the tape measure here as a straight object to connect uh, the point where the bra uh, starts in the center up to my one and three of an inch and from the bra strap point to the one and three of an inch mark I'm raising my hand again to make sure there's no gaping um, as for the underarm if the underarm is hurting you you could lower it in my case it's fine and the material they've used to finish it is just fold over elastic. I'll explain how to lower the underarm later. Right now, however, um, I got a needle and thread. I have a fine needle and one that's a bit thicker. I prefer to use the finer one or the thinner one. I'm using black thread here for the purposes of being able to see what's going on. Um, but I recommend you use thread that matches your bra. Or actually this is going to be a basting stitch so it doesn't matter what thread you use at this specific point so what I'm doing now is you see the cup is made of a layer of fabric on top of the foam so I'm sewing just next to my area my cutting line to make sure that the fabric won't float around after I'm done cutting as you will see so I'm sewing on one side of the dart and then along the proposed cutting line for the neckline of the bra. So I know in the email I said that you'd lower the neckline before changing the cup volume, but I guess you, you can do it simultaneously since that's what I've done here. So I've taken out the pins and now I have the uh, clear room to cut out my dart. I decided to pinch the dart towards the inside just to draw a line making sure that the point where I marked in the center 
is aligning with the underarm side of the bra now i made the neckline curved here but i wish i could have made it maybe straighter instead of a curve it could have been a diagonal but it's fine i have many many bras to experiment with in the future so i just cut from the neckline and then straight down then just a little bit past the marked points just maybe five millimeters not a lot just a little bit and then i'm going to cut up the other side i'm going to cut all the way up the dart that way i can line up my points again because there's no excess fabric hanging around so i'm going to get some pins and i'm going to pin the dart in place so that the raw edges are butted against each other you could use any pins you have i have some pearl pins and some t pins i do make wigs so i have mostly t pins i marked that point with a pencil uh, i should note that when you're marking on your fabric you should use washable fabric marker i don't have washable <laughs> fabric marker and i tend to live dangerously <laughs> so i um i drew my lines using a ballpoint pen but i don't recommend use a ballpoint pen please use a washable fabric marker or some tailoring chalk something that will wash off in the wash okay so plus in the end some of these lines are going to be covered so technically it doesn't matter if you don't have that in hand just you know use what you have you can use makeup you know like your eyebrow pencil or concealer yeah so now i'm starting the stitch by hiding the thread in between the layers of the bra and i'm going to do a back stitch to secure this technically it doesn't have to be back stitched because this is these stitches are so that you can remove the pins and try on the bra without the pins so that it's safe for you to see whether you like the shape of the cap and stuff like that so i'm just going in and out through the fabric and the foam until i get to the top where um after getting to the top i decided to start sewing back down instead of um tying a knot and ending the stitch there i don't know why i did that uh, but it's fine uh, remember when you're doing this to use thread that matches the fabric of your bra i'm using black thread here so that it's easy to see what i'm doing uh, also you could my stitches are about one centimeter wide in total from where they start to where they begin it's about one cm wide you could make yours thinner you could use a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine if you wanted to but we're doing this by hand so this is what it looks like on the inside so now i can try this on and see the shape at this point is when i realized that the the that i created i didn't follow a perpendicular line so the cup shape looks a little bit weird if you ask me but at least the neckline is fine so that's why i made sure to fix that on the other side now i'm measuring the width of my stitches like i said it was just a little over one cm i'm going to use a ribbon to cover the stitches so that's what i was saying make sure your stitches are not too wide because my ribbon ended up not being um, wide enough to cover things. So I'm using this. This is um, satin bias tape. So yeah, um, you could use a ribbon that matches the color of your bra. Or that contrasts depending on what you're going for or what you have. 
um what else oh yeah the underarm and the strap point so in case you need to lower your underarm area or to move your straps uh, you're going to check uh, the construction mine has fold over elastic so i won't uh, if i was to do it i'd have to unpick from that point to close to the underarm and then i would mark uh, an arc like that um you should do like half an inch if you do a huge chunk you won't be able to add the fabric back so you should uh, make the changes at the underarms uh, with not more than half an inch otherwise um, it's hard to go back so in case your strap was just sewn on you could just shift it and sew it onto the new point um in the video of the leopard print bra that i made two cup sizes smaller i do show you how to change your underarm uh, easily so i won't be doing that in this case because my underarm was fine and i wanted to make sure i focus on lowering the neckline of the cup and maybe changing the cup volume a little bit if that's needed so this is my satin bias tip i'm going to fold the edge so that the raw edges aren't sticking out I was going to start sewing from the point where the stitches begin but it is better to move the ribbon towards the wire line and start sewing from the bottom of your bra cap. I just pin that in place and I'm just getting uh, some thread and I'm going to start somewhere above the folded edge and then I'm going to go downwards. I'm just going in and out. You can start by uh, tying a loop to secure stitches. Uh, this is what they call a slip stitch, I think. So in case you're not familiar with the different uh, hand sewing techniques and you want to Google it, it's called a slip stitch or a hemming stitch done by hand. So I recommend you use smaller stitches instead of big ones like i have at the bottom i'm only using big ones because i wanted to get this done in time and also remember to use thread that matches your ribbon that which will look really really neat so once i get to the top i just secure that with a loop and instead of cutting the ribbon i just turn the bra towards the front I'm going to sew that side later, so just pretend I've sewn it. <laughs> it won't move around, don't worry. And now I can turn the ribbon over and downwards. So it's over the edge. And I'm going to get some pins and secure it in place before I cut the excess ribbon from the bottom. So I want it to stop just before the wire line so i cut it a little bit more because i am going to be folding it inwards and i don't want it to be too bulky i made sure the folded edge aligns with the wire line then i added another pin and i'm going to get the needle and thread and start sewing so make sure your ribbon covers the stitches and at this point i should have made the ribbon um, in such a way that it was perpendicular to my wire line or my waist instead of diagonal that way it would have hidden the stitches and made the appearance of the diagonal seem to be more perpendicular because it should have been hidden Anyway, I just folded the edge of the bias tip. So if this is ribbon, you could just fold the edge of your ribbon and then pin it to the outside and the inside of the neckline at the strap point area. And just going to fold it over the edge and pin it. You can pin through only the top. The pin doesn't have to go through both layers the ribbon because you're only going to sew through one side and then turn over to go and sew to the other side so with the pencil i just marked where the underwire channeling starts so that i can fold it to make sure that it starts exactly at that point i didn't want to sew through the underwire point it didn't seem necessary 
so i'm just adding a pin this time it's going through the ribbon on both ends like i said it doesn't have to i just did it in that moment uh, i added some more pins what i'm going to do is just use my fingers to guide me when i'm sewing so technically the pins are just hold the ribbon in place i'm creating a bow i noticed that uh in the pictures you shared one of the bras had a bow so i figured that if you're using a ribbon that is of contrasting color to your bra then adding an accessory like a bow at the center of the bra or at the strap point would um, tie up the design and make it cohesive i'm just sealing the edges with a flame from a match you can use a lighter that's also optional technically they don't fray a lot so yeah you could pin it to the strap point or to the center of the bra okay so i'll just set the bow aside because it's time for me to sew the the ribbon i should have sewn the ribbon at the center of the cap first but it's fine because even though I'm starting from the center of the bra, I'll just take my stitches down and sew the ribbon down the cup. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to sew that um, the stitches through the um, entire bra. As you can see just now, I went in and out in and out in and out and then when i came back i just sewed through the foam but not all the way to the inside of the bra so that will hold the ribbon in place and i can pick up the sewing for the top edge that is the neckline it's a very uh, straightforward process I think this took the entire thing took me an hour it might have taken less time if I wasn't looking for angles and stuff but I think an hour is good time so my phone uh, the memory space ended at this moment so let's pretend I finished sewing the rest on camera this is what uh, the bra cup looks like from the outside very cute I only wish that seam was perpendicular instead of diagonal but it's fine and that's what the inside looks like remember you should have uh, used thread that matches your ribbon or if your ribbon matches your bra then thread that matches your bra so like I said I wish I'd done that uh, that in a perpendicular manner like a wheel on the right otherwise everything is fine there's no gaping around the neckline this is a seam ripper. I'm using it to take out those stitches I did to keep the fabric covering the foam from moving around. You should do this when you're not wearing the bra. I just, when I put the bra on is when I realized I hadn't taken out those stitches. Yeah, so that's what the final product looks like. I hope this video helps you when you're doing the two bras that you need to repair.